Globe tards are one of the most dishonest people I have ever seen. Here I am with a scientific flat earth model, proving circumnavigation by air and by sea with oceans filled with real water almost two inches deep. On the lower side, all this globe tard can offer is a wet ball. Why can't he reproduce my experiment and display a real rotating ball with at least two inches of water attached to it? It's because he can't. Large bodies of water will never stick to a spinning ball. These dishonest people are the ones teaching in our universities. Our kids are graduating in foolishness. Hey globe tard, how about using this model to make two inches of water stick to it? So I was just curious and I decided to type in biblical cosmology in Google just to see what would pop up. You know, I was just curious and it was very interesting. I didn't see one heliocentric model, you know, because that's what's supposed to be biblical, remember? The Bible says that we're spinning and moving everywhere, but look at this, just a bunch of flat earth models. Very interesting. Hmm wonder why. The aliens found in Mexico are not real. The Mexican Congress held a never heard before event discussing the existence of aliens. But guess what? It was fake and has actually already been debunked. UFO researcher Jaime Musan presented two alien corpses claiming to be thousands of years old. Musan said the alien corpses were found in Peru in 2017. The creatures were tiny and chalky in color. They were basically space mummies. But funnily enough, the video playing behind me is from 2021 debunking the exact same little crusty alien. But it's not the first time Musan has discovered alien findings. In 2017, his claims were debunked after the space mummies he discovered from the same region turned out to be 100% human, just like this alien. Hmm. Alright, so in the 1960s, uh, we went to the moon. And uh, we're going to look at some of the vehicles they used right here. You can see there uh moon craft that they drove on the moon with almost looks like there's an upside down umbrella here we have the actual craft that made it to the moon wow this looks legitimate i mean this wouldn't fall apart in the earth's atmosphere It'd look like a school project or anything but you know i don't know anything nasa is a, a huge huge thing you know and i don't know anything i mean here we go here's more of the craft you know yeah i could totally see this going through the earth's atmosphere what about you you know, we're going to look at the leg of the aircraft next. You know, it, it's covered in a, well, it looks to be like a pretty gold foil. Um, You know, I'm sure that wouldn't fall apart, you know, upon entering the Earth's atmosphere. What do you think about this? Chris Pecula lays, we wouldn't have this if the sun was 93 million miles away, according to the globe model, we, whereby uh, the sun rays come in a parallel lines towards the earth. So we have the crispicular lays because the sun is local. We can use these rays to trace the position of the sun. Do you know why people get sunburns? Because the sun is local and uh, depending on their skin as well, right? Actually. So what do we see in this picture? We see the horizon. See the horizon? Do you know where the word horizon comes from? It comes from horizontal. Horizontal. Yeah? Horizontal. The horizon is horizontal. The horizon is never curved. Okay? There's no curvature. Look at the horizon. It's horizontal forever and ever. That's where the word comes from. They lied to us. There's no curvature in the world. There's no curvature. Look at it in the water. If you go forward, it continues and it continues. There's no curve. Water never curves because the horizon is horizontal. Well, 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 what do we have here? It says Space Force stands up, honor guard program, manned by guardians. These guardians are not who you think they are. These are super soldiers. Let's get some more. It says securing US in, from, and to space. New Space Force mission statement has our heads spinning. They are preparing for a war with the almighty God. Okay, we already know 
that nobody has ever left the earth. We already know that they have these projects like Project Mockingbird, um, Project High Jump, etc. They never left. So what they're doing is, is they're trying to protect the interests of this state, of this country, try to protect the sovereignty, but they won't be able to protect something that God created. God created sovereignty. They're trying to protect something that is not theirs. What they're trying to do is uh, get people prepped up and reared up for alien invasion, basically saying that God and his angels are alien, meaning unknown, but they are known. God has made himself known to mankind, but mankind still rejects him. So let's get some more. The U.S. Space Force unveiled its new mission statement on Wednesday, which is meant to be, which is meant to be, which is meant to better reflect the work carried out by its guardians, the name given to the Space Force personnel. The new mission statement reads, secure our nation's interest in, from, and to space. Now, for the spiritually discerned, that means that they're preparing for a war with God, which the Bible talks about, calls it the Battle of Armageddon. Worlds against worlds, nations against nations, and countries against countries. So in a nutshell, for those of you out there who want to know and are inquiring and want to believe something, there is no alien force, okay? It is an angelic force that is coming to dominate. It is an angelic force that is coming to see what's popping with mankind. Okay, Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, Uriel, they're all coming. See, they're lowercase G's. They're little gods to the big God. Okay, you're talking about um, special forces. The only real special forces is God and his holy angels. There is no aliens. They're the good and the bad, the holy and the unholy, the righteous and the unrighteous. God versus the devil. It's going to get real interesting. Be blessed. India's CGI moon landing is the worst ever put out by any so-called space agency. The worst part is that it actually fits India's standard and education. People there seem not to need much to believe in space fantasy. Just look at Bollywood movies you can understand why a CGI so bad is enough to maintain the Indian people in the Matrix. All right, so this is Confessions of a Flat Earther. I don't really want to say that. Leave my glasses on. I don't want anybody to know who I am. You know, none of us wanted to be a flat earther, I'm telling you right now. Nobody really wanted this to be true. Wow. Not easy, you know. You know the first time you hear about it, you're, you laugh, right? Oh, boy, that's stupid. Especially for me, you know, I've got two master's degrees. I, took, I was an astronomy major starting off in college. I took calculus one, calculus two, calculus three, differential equations. You know, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but got a little something up there maybe. I don't know, except besides the gray hair. Boy, this is tough. I hate coming out like this. <gasps> Hope nobody sees me. But you know, you go through life and you believe the earth is spinning and going around the sun and it seems pretty basic, right? And then somebody challenges you. I remember that I got challenged, right? German friend. Oh, I did. If you need to seek out the flat earth, I say, you're stupid. You know, it's more French than German. I apologize. You know, I'm trying to be incognito right now, you know. So anyway, you know, I, mean, I was in Munich. A friend told me to check it out. So I go watch a video. Eric Dubai, 100 proofs the world's not a flat, not a round spinning ball, whatever it was. I don't think the video's out there anymore. So I go back to my apartment in, in Munich. I'm by myself on that trip, and wow, 30 minutes in, I stopped the video. It's a lot of good proofs. Watch the full video; pretty convincing. Wow. So I fly back to America. Get off the airplane in uh, Atlanta. Look at the pilot. Say, man, it took us an hour longer on one trip to get there than it does here. I mean, why, why is it an hour longer to get home? Oh, it's because of the upper level atmosphere, the winds, you know, okay. 
I said, well, if the earth was spinning a thousand miles per hour, you think it would be a, a bigger time difference, you know? And he said, well, there is, the earth is spinning a thousand miles per hour. That's why it's an hour different. So he, he doesn't know he's a pilot, right? So the first experiment I did as a science-based, I'm a science-based guy. I mean, so I go to Pensacola, Florida. I'm, uh, I'm looking at the lighthouse. So I get an altimeter uh, app on my phone. I get a distance map on my phone. I go to the base of the lighthouse at Pensacola. I go look at the lighthouse. I go 10 miles away. I get my binoculars. I put it on the end of my iPad so I can see. There's no curvature. This is tough though, right? Because I'm visiting my uh, brother, brother-in-law, and he's a pilot, right? He's flying airplanes for the Navy. <laughs> he trains pilots, you know, this guy knows. So he's showing his picture from the cockpit, you know, and I said, wow, you know, the, the horizon's flat across. He goes, yeah, it's always flat across. Wow, that's cool. That kind of proves flat earth to me. And, and then uh, I, I finally tell him while I'm there, you know, I don't really like to tell people I'm a flat earther, but I finally said, hey, you know, I'm doing some research on the flat earth. He goes, oh, Dave, really? You an idiot? You know, he thinks I'm crazy. I said, yeah, but you told me the horizon's flat across. It was, well, not when you get to a certain altitude. Well, so it's been three or four years now, and he hasn't told me what altitude the earth goes from being the horizon flat to the horizon curving away from you like a ball. Well, I guess he hasn't figured that out yet. 22,000 feet, 30,000 feet. I don't know, but at 15,000 feet, it's flat across. I got another friend flies for a major airline, and uh, he's a pilot. He knows the earth is flat. He's never seen curvature. So then, you know, I'll go to Mount Hood, Oregon, right? I gotta do more experiments, right? I'm, I'm a scientist at heart, gotta do more experiments. Got to, gotta prove this thing. So I go to Mount Hood, go 100 miles east of Mount Hood. Get my altimeter out, I'm 300 feet above sea level. I can see the, the whole mountain, right? It's all there. Using the apps, using the formulas, calculus, trigonometry, computer-based formulas. You know, that mountain should be 4,200 feet below the horizon, but it's not. It's all there, man. It's all there makes it tough so anyway all the proofs are pointing to a flat earth you know so finally you know I'm, I'm gonna fly to South Africa I'm going to Cape Town so what I did was I was there during the summer equinox or real close to it and while the sunrise and the sunset is 15 to 20 minutes shorter on their summer than what we have in our summer here in North America it's because the Sun's moving faster that time of year because it's a bigger circle takes a bigger orbit there sun going around us so then you get you, you see all this evidence and you can't keep your mouth shut you got to talk right you got to tell people you, you got to warn people hey you've been lied to then they make fun of you right make videos put them on facebook your friends they don't talk to you your friends talk to their kids their kids talk to your kids they make fun of you but they don't talk to you right it's tough it's tough nobody really wants to be a flat earther it just happens you're a truth seeker. You go out, you look for curvature, and it ain't there. You look and you look, and you want it to be there so bad. You want it so bad to be there. Come on, curve, baby, curve. And it doesn't curve. It's flat across. And you make these videos, and people laugh at you. They call you names, and they never have any proof, right? Nobody. They show you a picture of the Earth from the, a composite. They never have any pictures. There's no proofs. There's no curvature. No one, no one makes a video of, you know, Bob and Steve out. You know, hey, we're eight miles away from each other, and can't see Bob because he's below the horizon you know none of those videos you know I'm not making money off of it I'm not getting popularity off of it so I just want to confess to you you know got to come out and tell you nobody really wants to be a flat earther when we look at the evidence there's no other option and that's just scientific you go to the Bible the Bible's a flat earth book well, then your religious friends get mad at you, right? Oh, boy, all these Christians. And I'm a Christian, you know. I'm, I go to church. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. Well, oh, Bible's a flat earth book. They don't like that. Nobody wants to hear the flat earth book. Yep, Bible's a flat earth book. Yep, sure is. Just read it. Nope, nobody likes that. Then the Christians get mad at you. Scientists get mad at you. And yet there's no MIT grad, there's no scientist, there's no NASA guy, no astronaut that can tell you why you see all of Mount Hood from 100 miles east. No one can tell you why on a curved ball. None of your religious friends can open their Bible and show you from the Bible where the earth is a round spinning ball going around the sun. So I just want to confess to you. Don't want to do it. Don't really want to be a flat earther. Ridiculed, outcast, made fun of. Yeah. It happens.
The Flat Earth map dates back over 1,000 years. This map is credited to being created by a Persian astronomer, Al-Biruni who lived between 975 AD to 1048 AD. It's the official map of the United Nations and also the United States Geological Survey. It used to be present in many places before the creation of NASA and the Antarctic Treaty in 1959. Here you see it with Admiral Byrd. This map has been restored by Dmitri from Russia with suggestions of mine, Idia Lenkar. Known by my YouTube channel Flat Earth Benjo, I asked Dmitri to include the Bermuda Triangle and Point Nemo, a place deep in the Pacific where NASA buries rockets. Then Robert Tazi, a professional mapmaker, came along and enhanced the map even more. There are many people now selling this map online, but if you could order it from my online store, I would greatly appreciate it. Visit my online store today and order one of the items. I humbly thank you.